Charlie Brown. Don't you think it's great? It's all wrong. Look, Charlie, let's face it. We all know that Christmas is a big commercial racket. It's run by a big Eastern syndicate, you know. Well, this is one play that's not going to be commercial. Look who's back, everybody. It's our old friend, the Fender Master of the Band. I'm going to wrap this sucker up, hopefully, today with the last little odds and ends. So this will be the epilogue. We replaced those uh, Space Age-looking metal knobs with some uh, knobs that look a little bit more period correct. We added a uh, blue indicator jewel, because uh, why not? Um, what's on the docket for today is I got some... Uh, some pots here. Um, when I replace these pots, I just use the um, DL cheapos that I use for uh, effects pedals. So we'll get a, a little bit nicer pot, a little more appropriate pot. Get some good pot, man. Hey, you want to get high, man? This how they do. They got wooden balls, man. I got a joint here, man. I've been saving for a special occasion. Got these from uh, Cheech and Chong themselves, and uh, we'll put those in there. That'll be more appropriate. And then, as discussed in previous videos, I've got some uh, nice big piece of uh, tarp board material. And uh, we'll make tarp boards uh, for the under the doghouse and for the uh, negative bias, that little tiny board there. And so that'll all match the uh, tarp board for the main circuit board that I built and replaced. And then, hopefully, uh, uh, oh yeah, we got to uh, see what's going on with this bright switch, see if we can't get that to work. Rather than that, that should do it. And then we'll have a, a project that's complete. Might be the first one. So if that sounds interesting to you, and I'm not sure why it would, but if it does, hang tight. Okie doke. I just upped the uh, settings on my camera here, so hopefully the uh, picture quality is nicer. I don't know, you tell me. How does that look? Alright, here's the original doghouse and the uh, replaced um, filter caps. And as you can see, uh, we've got the nice warped... Shitty old cardboard Kellogg's box uh, pilot board, which we're going to replace with, uh, if I can do this, I need three hands. Um, here's our uh, tarp board material, so we need to cut this and then uh, drill some holes and then uh, swage some tarts in there and uh, replace. So uh, that's what I'm working on. Wish me luck. These are two pieces of the tarp board material that I just cut. Uh, the Tone Priest doesn't have a bandsaw, so we had to use the uh, tools he had at hand, which was the uh, Harbor Freight brand um, Dremel style tool with a uh, you know cutting disc. And uh, yep, definitely want to use safety glasses when you're doing that. So uh, I think I'm going to put a um, sanding drum on there and uh, clean up the edges maybe put a nice little chamfer on there to be extra special and uh, then we'll move on to the next step all right if you didn't watch the previous four videos on this amplifier uh, this is why we're doing what we're doing we replaced the original eyelet board with this uh, tarp board that I built from scratch and we're just gonna get uh, the other two boards to uh, match and uh, here's the piece that's gonna go there and the width was perfect, and I believe it was two and three eighths was the, uh, you know, the measurement uh, in the other direction. So I made this two and a quarter, left a little bit of leeway in there. And as you can see, we got plenty of extra room over here, so that'll be fine. But uh, yeah, if you haven't watched the previous four videos, uh, it might be worth it to uh, set aside a weekend and watch those. Um, Tom Priest breaks out his favorite poison riffs, and uh, yeah. Good times were had by all. All right, moving on. All right, we're inspecting the original eyelet board on the doghouse for the final time. Documenting it for posterity's sake. 
because uh, the old memory on the old Tom Priest ain't all that great. But uh, these two uh, caps are in series. So we start with a ground, and then we have our first node. And then we move over to our second node, which uh, has two wires going to it. And our third node and our fourth node. And we have marked lines on all the wires. I'm likely going to change all of um, these wires with new wires. Because when uh, the, um, I believe, the uh, volume pot, uh, you can't see that, but anyway, the volume pot, was uh, not working, and I believe it was because some of the original wires had maybe breaks in them. And so uh, these wires are really skinny and old and suspect, so uh, you really don't want to have bad conductors on your power supply. So we'll uh, put all nice new wires in here, um, and beef up these uh, dropping resistors, and uh, yeah, this will be a really kick-ass amp. It already is a kick-ass amp. It'll be kicky, kickier ass, kick, kick-asser. What the fuck? <laughs> More kick ass? More kick ass. So, uh, the Tom Priest is going to have some brunch. He needs to build up his strength so we can uh, pick up the uh, drill press and move it over to uh, where he needs it. And then we'll uh, start building these tarp boards. Alright, we got our. Doghouse tarp board uh, removed from the chassis, and we'll uh, flip her over here. We'll see on the back side we have some connections. Um, so underneath the board, you know, these grounds are all tied together. And what else do we have? We have a couple of resistors here. That's uh, these guys hidden under the big capacitors, and I uh, believe that's going to be uh, these guys. Right, where's Mr. Pointer? going to be oop, oh man this video is a mess it's going to be uh these guys right here if we can focus uh i believe what those do if i'm not mistaken is just to uh make sure that each capacitor is taking uh an equal load and uh, not one's not doing more work than the other if i'm not mistaken but uh yeah there's that so uh what we're gonna do what are we gonna do we're going to remove these uh, components, and we'll uh, try and use the, uh, the board. Oh, this guy got cut. Move, uh, use this board as a template on our new piece of, you know, that thing that just fell in the trash. Tar board uh, material. We'll drill some holes, and, uh, well, you'll see. Hang tight. Okay, here we are. We can see our turret board material is not as wide. The shadows will help us here. Uh, not as wide as the original eyelet board. So um, I think the only thing we're going to be using for a template from the original stuff is the uh, bottom of the board and where the, uh, the mounting screws to the chassis were located. So we'll use that. <clears throat> and uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just... Uh, Lining these uh, guys up, and uh, I made some marks where the uh, original filter caps had eyelets, and we're going to draw some lines, and uh, make sure everything fits. You know, this is the type of thing where you want to measure twice and cut once, or drill once, anyway. And uh, we'll do that. And then you can see uh, there's plenty of room in the uh, doghouse here, uh, in the x-axis. Um, or if you're on a lathe, that might be the z-axis, but, uh, I digress. Um, where we don't need to really drill holes in the, uh, board to snake wires through. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm sure there's a reason why people do it. But, uh, I try to avoid that whenever possible. So, we'll, uh, have to take that into account. And again, I don't think, yeah. So even the mounting holes probably aren't going to line up. So, uh... Yeah, we'll have to make some modifications, but I think they'll all be worth it. So, uh, yeah, put that somewhere like that. And then the uh, the final thing to take into consideration is just how much room there is underneath the doghouse. To make sure that that can sit flush with the chassis and we're not smashing into the capacitor. So, uh, we'll probably, uh, you'll see when we uh, put the tarts in the board. On the underside, it's like a, it looks like a rivet end. 
So we have to get that off of, you know, we can't just smash it down to the chassis. We need to, to raise that a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe we'll uh, find some rubber washers or we'll come up with some kind of Rube Goldberg uh, system to uh, make sure this isn't touching the uh, metal chassis and shorten everything out. But still has enough room under the uh, doghouse cover. So it'll all be nice like. So uh, that's where we're at. And if anybody's interested in a... Uh, Vintage 1967 Fender Doghouse Eyelet Board. Yeah, I'll throw that up on Reverb. You know, like 400 bucks. That sounds about right. We've got our little board for our negative bias and our rectification pulled from the chassis. We had to snip the uh, ground leg, which is soldered directly to the chassis to get this to, to come up. But here she is. And we're comparing her to our Bandmaster model AC568 layout. And as you can see, it's only a couple of little differences here. The, um, the actual amplifier differs from the layout in that this wire here is connected to this lug, and the white and this yellow wire are connected to the opposite lugs here. But as you can see by the uh, drawing, and by the real thing, um, those terminals are jumping together, so it really doesn't matter. But uh, there's the back side, and, and yeah, you can see why I just do not like these eyelet boards. Is another example of why. Uh, sometimes when you're soldering these things, you know your components will heat up, the solder will heat up, but it takes a little bit longer for these uh, eyelet rings to heat up, and the solder doesn't stick, so you just uh, you know end up with uh, crap like that right there and plus you can't see what's going on you know underneath the board got some more jumpers underneath the board there of course we got these two we just spoke about you know if you have a, the, uh, an old schematic and it's a copy of a copy of a copy you know these uh, lines that indicate jumpers you know you may just think it's you know, artifacts from the uh, copying process, but uh, whatever. It is what it is. Here we are. So, uh, good stuff. Moving on. We've made all our measurements and marked up our boards uh, to get ready for drilling. Um, the only difference I did on this board is um, as far as lining up all the uh, turrets with the uh, kind of the same location that the original eyelets were in is the three smaller electrolytic capacitors. I'm pushing over a little bit to make room for a turret here. And what that's for is for this resistor right here. Alrighty, hopefully that works. We'll find out soon enough. And then uh, this guy right here. Good times. Here we go. I got Mr. Tripod set up and uh, Mr. Drill Press set up as well. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. I'm going to drill some uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch hole into our little um, turret board in anticipation of uh, staking in some turrets. So uh, let me show you how to drill a hole because this is some serious high-tech shit. getting excited about this. I think the key is to uh, make sure you stick your bit in the right place. Um, as is the case with uh, holes of all types. Well, but, uh, yeah, it's some real riveting stuff. So, uh, moving on. Now that I'm thinking about this, um, we really don't need turrets right here. These first two right here. Because um, on the original, we had our uh, diodes here, and then the wire came in here, and it was jumping underneath. We can just send the wire straight to this turret. But, uh, you know, the sin's already been committed. But uh, maybe we'll uh, repurpose one of those holes for, uh, like, a mounting hole. But, uh, you know, sometimes the tone priest can't see the trees through the forest, but uh, it's the way it goes. All right, let's get the other board. Here we go, she's all drilled up. 
Let's see if we can get some peelage action here for you. Yeah, this ought to be good. Oh, yeah. How was that? Pump the camera, though. Can you see? Can you see? I can see too much. Okay, we got our uh, little board here. You want to make sure you got the right side up. Here's our little turret. We're going to insert them into the hole. And then this piece here that goes into the chuck, there's a, uh, it's like a tube. So the top of the turret fits up in there. And then this bottom piece on the jig is uh, kind of like a metal cone. And what that does is it just rolls the, uh, the bottom of the turret and does a rivet type thing on the uh, bottom side of the board. So make sure it's in there nice and all the way down and stick the turret inside the tube. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. <laughs> Michael, please. There he is. Please. Mwah. Don't turn the drill on. Just using the press action. And give it a little press. You don't need to kill it. And there you have it. Can you see that? Can you see that? Pretty sweet, right? And that sucker is going nowhere until the end of time. So about uh, 600 more of these and we'll be uh, ready to go. There she is. Isn't she pretty? Yeah, get a nice in-focus table, but not what we're looking at. Uh, there's the backside. All right, moving on. So I'm assembling uh, or putting the components into our um, board for our negative bias and our uh, rectification. And um, they are using a full wave rectifier, but I'm thinking... Do we want to make a full wave bridge rectifier? Do you need a full bridge rectifier? Here's what we're using for uh, rectifier diodes. It says here it's a rectifier diode. Uh, 600 volts, that should be more than adequate. Um, and it can handle 3 amps, so uh, yeah, these should do. These are pretty beefy looking. So these are uh, 1N5406. I forgot what I used for this guy here, but it was... Um, you know, high voltage, and I think it was good for uh, 1,000 volts, actually, and uh, 1.5 amps rectifier diode. More than adequate, I believe, but uh, we'll find out. If she starts smoking and flaming, uh, we'll know that we did something wrong. Oh, why are we upside down? Oh, you got to fix it in post. Anyway, um, I know these uh, schematics can be a little uh, ambiguous here, but um, don't worry about the plus and the minus that they use on the uh, schematic. The, uh, the line is the line on the diode, that silver line, if you, it'll focus. So put the line where the line's oriented on your negative bias and your rectifiers, and you'll be good to go. Oh, look at that. Before. After. Pretty sweet, right? That'll be good for another 55 years at least. Nice. All right, moving on. There we go, one down. Just look pretty pretty in there. That should do nicely. Now we get to do the doghouse board. That should be a little bit easier. So uh, let's do it. Here we go. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, no, Will Robinson. Danger. We get our freshly built turret board, all populated. So now we're going to uh, go and um, maybe replace these wires with some nice freshies and then uh, snap her all together. Hope it fits. About to find out. While we're at it, uh, pulling wires through and we're, we're able to do this, um, I added a grommet to this uh, hole in the chassis that passes the wire from the uh, top to the doghouse because uh, it's just the right thing to do. All right, so it looks like we'll be able to replace all these wires. I've already replaced one. <clears throat> Pardon me. And um, the way I'm going to do this is the uh, wire that goes to the first node, the big uh, caps, is going to be orange. Then the two wires that go to the second node will be yellow. And then brown. And then uh, something else. But, uh, we'll see what we can get there. And then, of course, the, uh, the ground will be black. All right, here's our new power supply. Oop, need to clip that lead. 
Um, looking pretty nice, I think. Hopefully it works. I think now we're going to uh, tube her up and throw her on the current limiter. And uh, dial her up real slow and make sure everything works the way it should. Uh, we're obviously going to have to uh, rebias her. You know, we've got a completely new rectification system going on in there. And a bunch of new resistors. So uh, we'll check the bias again at some point. And uh, if this all works, we just got to address that uh, pot and uh, the bright switch. Not that this thing needs to be any brighter, but, uh, you know, you want all the uh, factory equipment to work. So uh, that's what we'll try and do. But uh, before I button all this up and make it look nice and neat, I'm going to fire her up. So uh, let's do that. All right, so I fired this up real quick. And uh, it was sounding weak and warbly and distorted. Uh, like it had a filtering problem, and uh, if you're smart, you can probably see what I, uh, dumb guy like me, didn't see. Uh, I screwed up these uh, two resistors, the way those are wired. Those are wired incorrectly. Um, supposed to look like that. And they look like that. So we're going to uh, make adjustments and uh, make it right. So uh, hang tight for that. All right, we made some changes. I'll uh, show you the changes in a minute. But uh, dialing it up again to see if uh, those changes were helpful. So what do we got here? 83 volts we're giving it. So almost half a uh, amp. 33 watts. That's pretty nice, right? It's like aquamarine. Well, maybe not in the camera, but here it is. But uh, all right, let's see if uh, this sounds any better. Hang tight. channel so that channel is significantly louder do the knob and I'm gonna look a little bit into um, why the uh, normal channel is uh, quieter but I think it's uh, running one less amplification stage uh, but I just want to be sure make sure we haven't screwed something up or we got a bad tube or something but uh, almost done this fucking thing is tight t-i-t-e tight tight <laughs> tighter than I am. Mm. All right, I got another file for the uh, lies and misinformation uh, file cabinet. I think on a previous video, I'm pretty sure, uh, the volume pot is a one meg audio. I misread the uh, schematic in the uh, I'm just going to uh, blame the fact that it's, you know, pixelated and kind of convoluted, but uh, we got to the bottom of it. So, uh, there you go. Eventually. 
All right, I guarantee you just saw a SpongeBob uh, clip right there because it's probably about a week uh, after you saw the last clip. So I have no idea where I left off, but uh, blah, 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 rebuilt amp, blah, 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 turret board, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, diodes, capacitors, resistors. You get the idea. Uh, so what else did we do? Um, saw an Uncle Doug video, one of his most recent ones. I forget what he was building. And lo and behold, it is a 1965 Blackface Baseman amp. But I'll put a link in the thing. There's, there we are. Link in the thing. Uh, I'll track it down. We'll fix it in post, as we always do. Um, but we had this unused uh, ground switch over here somewhere. This guy here, he wasn't doing anything since we took him out of circuit because there's no more death capacitor. So what we did was we uh, now have a switchable on-off uh, negative feedback. So you uh, point the thing towards the tubes. It's in normal mode, just like Leo uh, designed her to be. Put it this way, and it interrupts the circuit over to our negative feedback. And uh, that really gives it a nice kick in the pants. Uh, as you will hear, I'm sure, at some point. So we did that. And uh, the final things we need to do is just uh, dress the leads a little bit better, as best we can. Um, just give her a once-over. And uh, did notice that the tremolo was ticking a little bit. Ding dong! And the final thing we need to address, I believe, is the tremolo, 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 vibrato, whatever you want to call it is uh, ticking a little bit. So I believe these... Somebody at the door? Who's that at the door? I believe the solution to that is to add a uh, 0.1 or 0.01, I forget, uh, capacitor right here over this 10 meg. And uh, that should hopefully solve that. But uh, I will figure out what uh, value it's supposed to be and then we'll uh, put that sucker in there and uh, We'll see how it, uh, if it helps or not. And then, uh, oh yeah, I think I'm going to go back and just top off all the uh, turrets. This is probably triggering some, like, real amp text that there's no nice little domed blob of solder on there. Even though these things are not going anywhere. I uh, originally populated the board with the components first. And then when you go back in and uh, add the leads, add the wires to all the turrets, you know, it tends to uh, melt the little top cap and in, into the... Uh, Inside the turret, so whatever. We'll make it look legit. But, uh, alright, there you go. Hang tight for that. Let's do it. Alright, there's our little capacitor. That'll hopefully, uh, take care of the little, um, little bit of ticking we had in the tremolo. It wasn't bad. And, uh, of course, I always have the amp on 10, so if it was on a more reasonable volume, you probably wouldn't even hear it. But, uh, and especially when you're playing, you, you didn't even notice it. But, uh... And we wanted her to be as good as she could be, right? So there's that, and I uh, topped up some of the tart tops, tried to make it a little prettier. And, um, oh, look, we came in the mail today. I uh, bought a 12AX7 for the Vega amp, but it uh, turns out it doesn't take 12AX7. So we have this nice uh, RCA. We'll pop in here somewhere. And uh, if it doesn't already, I have a couple of RCA AU7s. I believe it takes an AU7 in the phase inverter. But uh, yeah, let's flip her over, take a look what uh, what we have in there in the tubes, and uh, if she could use a couple RCA, she's gonna get it. My mistake, it takes a 12 AT7, so we won't be able to use that AU7, or we probably shouldn't. But uh, look what I found in the pile. Can you see that? Probably not. Nice. So we'll uh, take out this guy here, which is a tungsol, saw, which uh, we like tung saw. Who doesn't love a tung saw? So we'll take her out. And uh, we'll put this bad boy in another amplifier somewhere down the line. And we'll throw uh, an RCA in there. And uh, got an RCA here, but the, uh, the one I just got is older, I believe. What do I get? What did I get? Oh, yeah, this is some real uh, crusty vintage, vintage stuff. So we'll put this in V1. Put this guy in probably V2. Maybe V3. I don't know. We'll do what we do. And then we'll fire her up and see uh, how she's doing. All right, this is what we're doing for real now. So V1 is going to be the newer of the two RCA 12AX7s. 
V2, which would be the vibrato channel, or the Tremulu channel. Uh, that's the older of the uh, RCA 12AX7, so uh, V3. Uh, I think we're going to use this uh, new mullard, because uh, why wouldn't you? Made in uh, Russia. And um, last but not least, can we see what's going on here? That's right, we've got the RCA-12-87. All right, and then our uh, our beautiful JJ's. Um, provided and matched uh, by the Tube Depot. Not provided. I provided them money. They provided me match tubes. So, uh, there we go. Let's plug it in and see how she sounds. All right, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear it. And the uh, symptom, the uh, tremolo noise is unchanged. It's not really the ticking problem. So I don't think the ticking problem solution was the problem for this problem. It's uh, interference, and if we uh, play around with it, nothing. When I get to two, you start to hear it. It gets a little bit louder in the middle, and then slightly less when you get to 10 here. But also when you uh, turn the volume, It's louder when the volume is all the way down. So I think we have a uh, grounding and, and or lead dress issue. So looks like we're going to have to uh, go in there and snake some wires around. A lot of those wires connected to all these pots, or all of them probably, are still the original wires that came from the factory. So, uh, yeah, something more to do. Ooh, someone's making a phone call. This is the amp that never ends. Every amp is the amp that never ends. We still got to get these bright switches working. Not that anybody's ever going to use them on this amplifier. But um, they got to work. But uh, yeah, anyway. Well, we can still demonstrate the uh, negative feedback. So uh, hang tight. Let's do that. before I replaced the RCA jack that uh, the foot pedal normally uh, uses and replaced it with a grounding uh, quarter inch jack. So um, tremolo is always on and if you want to defeat it just any old uh, quarter inch jack will kill it. Like so. And there goes the noise. Uh, and it also shuts off the tremolo. So let's uh, crank it. I'll demonstrate the uh, the negative feedback. This noise is caused by the uh, proximity to my computer. This is what the uh, normal, as designed, negative feedback in circuit. Now we'll 
will uh, kill the negative feedback with our little switch. Now let's see what we got. <laughs> I think I found the, the uh, where the noise was getting introduced into the uh, tremolo circuit. Um, this orange wire, which is basically your B plus coming off your uh, rectifier diodes, uh, I had it running over here, right by the uh, tremolo uh, depth and intensity knobs. So we just rerouted her, and we'll neaten her up and make her look pretty at some point. But uh, yeah, so that's not good. You got. Uh, all that voltage going right next to these pots here, and uh, the amp's on right now. Um, volume's all the way up. Now the only time you get noise is when the intensity is on 10. And not even. There you go. Problem solved. So there you have it. We fixed it. Oh, it's still getting a little bit of noise, so... Uh, it's much better than it was, but we'll still uh, play around with the uh, lead dress. And uh, as you can see, uh, one of the fixes was to um, reroute the leads from the uh, depth and intensity away from the uh, tone stack. And as you can see, uh, Fender has them just all wrapped around each other here. So we might play with that. We might play with these a little more. Oh, we're getting phone calls too. Here we go. Now she's quiet as a church mouse. Any uh, noise here, it's coming from my phone. Whenever I turn my phone on to start the camera, it starts uh, making Morse code through it. Hello? But I um, had to uh, unsolder this uh, ground wire from the lug. Not the lug. Well, yeah, from the lug of this uh, pot, so I could dig these guys out. These are all the uh, wires from the uh, tremolo intensity and rate. But I kind of got everything separated, and this sucker's perfectly silent now. So we'll go in here. We'll try and route this stuff and uh, anchor it all down so it's uh, secure and as pretty as possible. Not that anybody's going to see this, hopefully in my lifetime. And uh, there we go. Problem solved. Good times. So it turns out the Tone Priest is not very bright, 
but I think we uh, already knew that. Um, he actually took the 30 seconds to uh, use the search function uh, um, on his internet browser and to see how the bright switch actually works. And um, yeah, it's like a tone knob on your guitar where it changes with the, uh, depending upon where you set the uh, potentiometer. And of course, uh, well, at low volume, it adds brightness, but the more you turn it up, uh, the less effect it has. And of course, you know, around here in the Tone Church, uh, we always have our volume knob at 10. So, uh, yeah, that's why I wasn't doing anything. Thank you! Well, here's what it is. Now we know. This is how we learn. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's put her back in the head cabinet and, uh, the sucker will be done for at least another couple hours. All right, we got our meters out, so we're trying to bias her up. Um, yeah, this isn't sketchy at all, but uh, this is how we do what we do. So we're uh, letting the tombs warm up so we can get some nice accurate readings, and then uh, we'll set the bias because we did uh, change the rectifier and stuff since the last time we biased her, and uh, I think we changed a couple other little things. Oh, we changed the power supply, so yeah, she certainly needs it. So uh, that's what we're doing where we're at right now and uh i am not going to do this live because uh i don't want to get electrocuted so hang tight all right so where she sits she's at 19.45 watts of plate dissipation if we look at our j j uh data sheet uh she can take 30 so 70 percent of that would be 21 we're at 19 and a half i think we let her ride so that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, package it back up. This looks very much like something I found in the Tone Nun's top dresser drawer. <laughs> Yikes. Look at how pretty. You like that new gem? Jewel? Indicated jewel? Gem? Light? Circuit? Socket? Thingy? Turns out everybody's using blue, but uh, whatever. We're not original around here. Um, drip edge. We got this uh, drip edge here. In case you're playing out in the rain. <laughs> and they call this a black line too, I guess. Because it's got black lines here. So that gets... Uh, that is uh, the way you can tell it's an early one if the date codes on the transformers didn't already tell us that, and the AC-568 circuit didn't already tell us that, but uh, there you go. How pretty is that? She's a real beaut. All right, I'm gonna play a few notes. I'm not gonna do a huge demo because uh, A, I'm a terrible guitar player, and B, um, I think over the weekend we're gonna do a little recording project with this one. So uh, yeah, here we go. Switch works. Imagine that. the uh, 
negative feedback kill. So that's uh, the circuit as designed by Leo. We'll uh, get rid of that nasty negative feedback if I can find it back here. There she is. See, it gives it a nice little kick in the pants. All right, it's for a normal channel volume on 10, bass and treble turned all the way down. So, good times there. You don't need bass and treble, you just need volume. And then, for a quickie on the vibrato channel. Which works. Let's see if the volume works. Christmas, everybody. God bless us, everyone. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow with something cool. Done. This is our Christmas tree this year. You like the decorations? Sure, like that decoration right there. <laughs> <laughs>